of this session of our D&D campaign. Um, in part one, we found Harbeck in the inn he was hiding in after running away from the elves. Um, well, after the elves told him to move along harshly with their swords, he didn't really run away. He was thoroughly captured, and they just let him go because he wasn't the guy they were looking for. Um, but that's... I digress. He contacted Tabarin through the Artificer's Guild and now owes them a favor. Um, Tabarin gave him a disguise so that he could safely come back to the inn and meet up with Brieg. There were some heartwarming moments. Uh, Brieg told us a little bit about his history, which he doesn't know much of, and about why the elves are following him. And the party decided that we need to hire a boat to go out to the shipwreck and investigate the crash that brought us all together, as well as accomplish Harbeck's favor for the Artificer's Guild. So we return to Flick in negotiations with the ship captain. At the Salted Crab. Indeed. All right, so Tabern's going to take out a couple of the, the gems that are in there, pull them yep. out, roughly assess what they're worth, um, you know, make sure he, he's pretty confident that there's, you know, 100 gold pieces worth, maybe a little more. Um, let's just tell you what. I don't want to put myself and this lovely lady at risk as well as our friends. You're, you're the captain. I'd like to leave as soon as we can. So if whatever you can do, I can offer a little, little bonus if we can, can speed things up a little bit within your own reason. I'll roll a persuasion. Okay. Ooh, you're very <laughs> persuasive. You're quite persuasive. And roll a uh, investigation for appraising those gems. A 14, okay. He takes the gems from you, looks at them with a discerning eye. All right, this'll do. I'll assemble a crew. Where can I find you? I'll check back each morning here at the Salted Crab. Works for me. And I do appreciate it. We'll uh, check back in tomorrow. I'll see you then. Head on out. <clears throat> Okay. So, Tabern and Din, you head back to the inn. I guess. Uh, That's exactly and... how our Vikings. That's true. <laughs> I ask for what I want, and then they give them all of the money. But, but you see, I holds up the bag of gems. I still have gems left. <laughs> how many gems do you have left? A Look slightly in there. smaller bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so you head back to the inn uh, and explain to the rest of the party, hey, we have a boat, but it's going to take some time to for the ship's captain to be ready. Otherwise, he would have required an excessive down payment. Um, and that you're going to check each day to see... When the whether or not you're ready to go. I can so, make more brews. Uh, everybody has another capacity for a long rest, or, or mm. you know, sort of eight hours to do whatever they want with. Is there anything anybody wants to do? I would like to spend, use my artificer skill to research a knockout brew so that I can sleep through the trip. <laughs> I don't know if I'll manage it in time that we're ready for the ship, but that's what I'm going to spend every one of my long rests on. 
Okay, so the first day slash night, uh, roll your your brew mastery check, which is a survival for creating new brews, I believe. Um. Okay. That uses the same skill as brewing supplies. Has the same modifier. My survival skill. So I'm just okay. gonna roll it with brewing supplies. First try was a ten. <sighs> You make a very alcoholic beverage, but don't achieve any flashes of insight or wisdom. It's not uh, quite it as is, delicious as other alcoholic beverages. It's the next morning, Tabron. Uh, you're going to head down to the docks. Yeah, I'll head head back down. Uh, whenever we have free time, I want to start talking to Tabron and try to learn his disguise kit skills. I feel like that would be useful for me to know. You want to learn how to disguise things. Mostly myself, but yes. Seems like that okay. would be a handy handy thing to pick up. Fantastic. All right, so, Tabron, you head down to the docks. You head into the Salted Crab. Uh, Jonathan is not there. All right. We'll uh, wait till tomorrow. Okay. So you head back to the inn, uh, and Brig approaches you and asks about disguise kits. And how you managed to make Din look not like Din. <laughs> if you guys would like to practice on me, I'd like to spend a bit of time today outside the inn looking for ingredients and things to work on my brews tonight. If, uh... <laughs> so... You can do that. For, for those of you who are not aware in the audience or wherever, um, there is actually a, like, downtime activity mechanic in 5th edition. Um, so you can pick up new languages or new skills or proficiency with tools are the two like generally things you can do as long as you have someone willing to teach you um, training takes 250 days and costs a gold piece a day so it takes a lot of downtime but I would like to start that process with Tavern to instruct me and I will Tavern. probably use the process of learning essentially brewing but with a twist with infusing with magical skills and abilities yep so uh, our dwarven friends wants a disguise please give me a disguise for Havoc as you show Brig how it works alright I'm sure glad the ones are on the uh, back end of all of these yeah, I know, right? You've rolled so many. If you had disadvantage, you would be screwed. <laughs> uh, right. So, Harbick, you end up disguised like a dwarven lady again. All right. And Bree gets to watch the process happen, which is quite interesting, Bree. I knew they were sandbags. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and so... You wander around trying to find ingredients and... Yeah, I'll spend a couple, like, half the day in town looking through different shops of, like, herbalists and whatever um, for something that I think I could use for the brew I'm working on, and then I'll spend the other half of the day outside of town looking at the local flora. Okay. Uh, can I get a survival check? So this is for your, your actual research process. Mm-hmm. Wow, I did a bad job today. Okay, you were too focused on being a lady to do any actual research. But that's okay, and then night time comes around and you're going to do some brewing and so forth. Can I please have a second survival check for your creation yep. thoughts? And a 12. Okay. Um, still no dice, no progress made on... Okay coming up with new concepts. Next morning comes around. Uh, Tavern heads down. So Tavern is heading to the Salted Crab. Excuse me. Uh, you get to the Salted Crab, you have a bit of a look around, uh, and Jonathan is not there. This time, on my way back, I'll circle around the docks. Yep. Seeing if I can see him. 
Uh, roll a perception. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Uh, you don't see him anywhere, but you do recognize his ship. Uh, during your negotiations, it was described to you, and you recognize his ship. His ship is still here in the harbor. Um, and while you don't see him anywhere around the docks immediately, uh, you, you can see that his ship is still here. And given the cost of ships, you know, it's not something that you just leave behind for a hundred gold pieces worth of gems. I, I head back to the inn. Okay. Uh, what is everybody else doing for the day? I'm practicing my newfound makeup skills on my ferret. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure, Binks will comply with my, you know, try c combing his little ferret hair and giving him big eyelashes. Like now looks like a weasel. Mm -hmm. um, Harbeck's gonna head back out. If you know, if we're continuing the disguise training, and Harbeck can get another disguise, he's gonna head back out to um, this time looking for inspiration because last night's like theorizing session didn't go super well. So. Um, you know, still hunting for supplies and things, but with, like, a bit of a different mindset. Okay. All right. Roll the does, survival check for me, please. Mm -hmm. Does hunting for inspiration as a brewmaster really mean you're just bar hopping? Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Like, this is a pretty specific type of brewing. I don't think tasting... Like, the biggest difference between most brews is, like, flavor and alcohol content. I'm going for a different effect, so I don't know how much bar hopping would help, but I bet there's some involved. Almost certainly going to be some involved. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so you roll the 19. Um, there's a, there's a, a medicine that the local people drink, um, which is supposed to help them sleep. Uh, and you learn a little bit about what goes into that medicine. and, and um, It's all created from local ingredients, things that you should be able to source fairly easily. Uh, if I have time left, I'd like to go see if I can find some of the ingredients also to, to play with tonight during my study session. Okay. Uh, you wander around in the forest for a little bit and do manage to find, you know, um, a couple of examples of that particular herb and uh, gather it up and prepare to brew with it this evening. Uh, and then the evening does come around, so can I get a, a research check from you, please? Mm -hmm. Harbuck. Yeah, apparently that helped. Most enjoyable um, boat ride ever. <laughs> so you 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 know brew up a brew and think, yep, this this should work, and then you drink the brew. It's now the next morning. Um, <laughs> it works. <laughs> uh, and you wake up very lethargic and groggy and sleepy and tired. And I, I hope I can manage to get dosing right to just sleep <laughs> for the trip. <laughs> Um, but, but, you know, that was, that was basically one big swig of the ale and, uh, it, uh, it, it knocked you out for a, a good, goodly portion, one might say. Um, Tabron, are you going to head down to the docks again? Yes. Okay, you head to the Salted Crab, where you see Jonathan sitting in the corner. I approach him. Uh... Are all things ready? Aye. We're ready to sell. As soon as you give the word. Sounds great. I, I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, it's a little quicker than I I'd anticipated. And I pull out another gem and hand it to him. Okay. The bag of gems is getting lighter. But uh, he takes the gem and smiles at you. He says, where are we going anyway? Uh, small island. Out in the bay. I will bring a map with me as we meet. Um, two hours time. Two hours? Okay. You've got it. You know where my ship is, right? I do. I give a very nice description of it. I happened to walk by it the last couple of days and 
admire it. She's a good ship. You will not be sorry you chose us. Much appreciated. Yeah. See you soon. I'll see you soon. And he wanders out the door to obviously assemble his crew and get ready. Uh, and then you'll be heading back to the inn, I guess. Yeah. Okay, Harbick, you have two doses of, of, uh, like, dream beer. I like and, it. Good name. And, uh, when you are, when you are finally awake after a very, very slow start to your morning, um, you manage to bottle that up. Okay. Uh, Tavern, you're back at the inn. What are you going to do? i let everyone know that the ship is ready and ready to set sail within an uh, hour's time. Harbeck nervously runs his finger along the edge of his dream beer. Okay, I guess I'm ready. Make sure we have provisions and rations and whatnot. Do you and think it's necessary for all of us to go about disguised? At this point, I think we might be okay. It's been several days. I was just being paranoid. I'm the only one they saw clearly. And I was spending a lot of time outside. I think a trip from here to the dock is not much of a risk. Well, they know what I look like. I think a trip from here to the dock is not much of a risk. Alright. I can just dress him up like a girl. I'll, I'll just put, put him the in hood cloak. of my cloak up. Yeah. Just putting the hood of your cloak up. Okay. You head down to the docks, a little lot of you, traveling in a group, uh, and you find Jonathan's ship easily enough. She's a good looking Caraville. Uh, for those of you who know anything about shipping, which most I, you probably don't. In uh, uh, Rogar don't to <laughs> kind of keep weapons and things less visible, his heavy armor less visible, to be a low key travel if possible. I will look my clericiest <laughs> instead of my warrioriest. Fair enough. So he's got a big hooded robe around him, and he's got his holy symbol out. Um, it's still actually my uh, my holy symbol is on my shield, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> which is strapped to his back. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna carry a, a smallish keg. From the inn, if I mean, I'm sure that like I've bought enough goodwill with all of my brewing for the inn to take some out to the ship. Uh, I hope. Maybe I'll just buy one. I have money. Uh, yeah. As you pick up the barrel of uh, brew, the inn innkeeper says, "Look, just." Give me a couple of gold and then we'll call it square. It's, it'll be fine. I'll leave three on the counter. Okay. We want to create goodwill. You lose three whole gold. Yep. Shocking. So this this beer is worth three fiftieths of an apple. Yeah, the whole the exchange of rate. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> leave dinner alone. All right. <laughs> I like that we've started thinking of things in terms of how many apples they're worth. <laughs> it's our new currency. <laughs> so the tier above gold pieces is apples. <laughs> uh, 50 yeah. gold to one apple. <laughs> Next world I create, that's what they're going to call the biggest denomination of coin. Gonna and apples. apples. <laughs> That'll be the slang term. For it. They'll, be, they'll just call them apples. <laughs> how do you like them apples? <laughs> hey. hey man you are all full of puns today okay so uh jonathan looks over the party and he sort of raises an eyebrow 
Uh, roll a, it's not sense motive, it's called insight now, right? Insight. Roll an insight check, everybody, please. Harbeck suspects that this man hasn't had enough delicious beer and makes his keg very visible. Uh, so, ever saw, uh, Brieg notices. The captain is a little cautious. He has recognized that you are not just a group of people Friends who want to go out onto a bay. It, it's clear to you that it's clicked in his head that you're not just a group of wealthy aristocrats looking for some time on the open sea. It's You have other motives. You, he can tell. You can tell he knows that. <laughs> the wealthy aristocrats clearly brought their bodyguard, their jester, and their <laughs> beer master for the booze cruise. <laughs> How it's obvious. I will, uh, while, while I momentarily consider talking directly to the captain, that thought makes me too nervous. So I lean over to Tabra and say, you may want to explain that he, whatever trouble we get in, he won't be in it. He looks a bit nervous. I will uh, definitely do that. I uh, approach the captain, introduce my uh, friends, and um, assure him that we uh, were. There is nothing to worry about, no harm to him, his crew, or his ship is even remotely possible. Roll me a persuasion check, please. Tabern is very persuasive. Tabern is always very persuasive. Why do you have to be so persuasive? I am rolling really good when it counts today. As opposed to last session, where everybody rolled natural ones every roll, <laughs> all session. <laughs> you know, so we fell off all the horses and almost lost our dwarf. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was pretty terrible. He says, okay, uh, just don't, uh, I'm not interested in drama, please just, if you bring it on the ship, I'm just going to throw you overboard, it's easier. Don't throw Harbeck's keg overboard, though. You'll want to try some of that. <laughs> we're, we're bringing that on ship. I, I, when he makes that threat, I want to sort of assess his crew and determine if there is like any teeth to that threat at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every time an NPC thug threatens the, the player party. Like... <laughs> Right. Really? <laughs> you guys realize that you're like the trash encounter before the boss, right? <laughs> <laughs> right like uh, I, I know that we are have, can handle ourselves. I've seen us in action several times. I just like I want to make sure that I don't actually need to be worried about this guy. <laughs> hey, look, they're they're regular sailors. They're big. They're brawny, but they're they're sailors. Right. You know? they're like, I've brought a jug of make sure sailors like us. <laughs> they're, they're like one quarter CR thugs or something like I don't, I don't actually need to be concerned about them you can you can clearly tell unless one of them is hiding their potential they're just <laughs> okay. run of the run of the mill sailors then, thugs then I'm I'm okay with his with his threats <laughs> okay uh, so he, a map he invites you onto the ship he runs through some basic rules he lets you all know that you've got your own cabin, um, that if he tells you to go to your cabin, you go to your cabin and you stay there. Um, if he tells you to jump off the ship, you do it, because he's the captain, and that's what the captain demands, and you will do it. 
While you're going over the rules, I do have a question. Because I brought this to share, and I intend on sleeping most of the journey because ships don't agree with me. So, whenever your men are allowed and when you're allowed, feel free to have at the barrel, and I'll just leave it there on the deck. Okay. Mm, thank you, Sir Dwarf. All right, so, uh, yeah, them the rules. Pretty straightforward. Now, where are we heading? Uh, I show them the map. I assume we have a map in this island, or at least the name of it. And It's a map that points to an open bit of ocean, basically. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. ultimately where we want to go. It's Looking there. Very specific. Yeah. Aren't you just here for a cruise? We're cruising to that area. That area. We're looking to have a picnic, and the dwarf doesn't like to eat on the ship because he can't keep the food down. There's I'm really not to good a, at boats. There's supposed there's to be an island there. There's no land there. Well, if we're wrong, we're wrong. Let's go look. Suit yourselves. And he starts to order the sailors around him. Get the boat underway. Harbeck hurries to his cabin and drinks himself to sleep. <laughs> and drinks himself to sleep. How much of the dream beer is he going to Oh, invite? I should ask how long the journey takes and then try to make the dosage match. <laughs> we it's can get about, there and back in a day. It's about, about an eight-hour eight hour sail. Great, so... To the location on the map. Seems like about the same dose I took last night, then. So you take one big swig mm -hmm. of dream beer. Okay. <coughs> and you fall asleep. Rather quickly. See you guys at the island. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alright, the rest of the journey is reasonably uneventful. Uh, until about a half hour before the uh, the the journey is supposed to finish. The captain hears a cry from one of his crew members, and you all hear it if you're around on the ship. I mean, it's not a big ship, it's only a small ship. Um, a cry of ship spotted. And the uh, the captain sort of has a look over and, and pulls out his spyglass and looks towards where the, the ship is and he lowers his spyglass he says well well I'll be damned and he walks up to Tabern and grabs Tabern by the neck of the shirt yes captain you told me you wanted a cruise you told me you were coming out here for pleasure what was your real purpose? Our pleasure of exploring this ship. <laughs> Do you have any idea what ship that is? I have a vague I... idea. Well, you're on your own from here. Get your stuff. Sounds great. And grab the dwarf while you're at it. We'll go grab the door, dwarf. I'll help. Hey, at least there's at least there's no storm. <laughs> Don't um, you're making it worse, how lad. How are we gonna get home? There's always a way. I assume that the good captain is going to wait out here at anchor while we make our way to the island and back. Or I never I have wrong the magic rope. One. I forgot. I'm not getting anywhere near that ship. Let me say that again. Well, I assume the captain is going to stay here at anchor. Briggs being forceful. What's going on? What's happening? I don't like it. <laughs> uh, I, I lean over to the captain <laughs> and I say... Intimidation. Roll an intimidation. <laughs> I just assume that I do these with disadvantage regardless of the circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
And I said, little one, I'm not going anywhere near that ship. I'm not asking you I to believe we've ship. paid you to stay right here. for passage in two directions, sir. Now, are you going to be dishonest? Says the group of people who deceived me into coming near this wreck. I mean, he could just pay us back for the return trip, right? His crew starts to lower the the sort of lifeboaty, small dinghy-sized ship, well, dinghy-sized boat, over the edge of the boat, and lowering a rope ladder into the sh into the bo into the little boaty thing, and says, "Right, everybody in." Look, give us two hours. I don't think you As understand I you what before. I just said. Do you remember the rules of the cruise? Get into the boat. The Do you okay. remember the you agreement that we made? <clears throat> Tabrin, I think... I think that we don't have much of a moral leg to stand on here. As far as, like, keeping to the... I, he's got a point. Now, Thank you. you know that... I'm not one to be stranded on a, on a bit, a, a scrap of rock surrounded by water. You know that that's not me. But to think that we don't really have much of an argument here. Might we convince you to meet us a bit further away from here? I don't know how far we can row that, I don't know much about boats. I don't know how far we can row that tiny one to meet you to get back to land, but I'd certainly not like to be stranded. Roll, <clears throat> excuse me, where well, I can speak again. Uh, I, with my <coughs> roll fingers Pers and whisper, give, cast uh, guidance, gives uh, an extra d4 to a skill check for Harbeck. Oh, yeah. Um, Harbeck, roll a uh, persuasion, I guess, um, and add an extra d4. Twenty-two. If you're lucky, I'll be waiting just over the horizon in that direction. Now get in the boat. Thank you, Captain. You've been more than understanding. I regret that he we had to... already in the boat. I regret that we had... I'm just going to get in the boat. You know what I regret. Keep the beer. Keep the men entertained while you wait for us. I appreciate you. I get in the boat. I as get in Brig the boat. Climbs into the, as Brig climbs into the boat, he says just loudly enough for the captain to hear, I still don't know what he would have done if I didn't want to get off. <laughs> Good thing you wanted to get off, Brig. No. Oh. <laughs> Harbeck really makes himself as small as Harbeck can make himself in the middle of the boat as far from the water on both sides. Why does this thing move so much? As it, that, no. No. no, 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 no. I was no. really only being forceful because I know how much you hate the water, Harbeck. I appreciate Aww. it, Brig. It's nice. Aww. Could we just row the thing? Just make the thing move to the land, please. Brig stands on the bench. <laughs> 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 Two hand rows the one side. <laughs> and Rogar just like grabs the other side with one hand and casually rows. Um, okay. Can I make an athletics check to see how fast I can get us there for Harbeck's sake? <laughs> yeah, sure. Roll in <laughs> athletics. Do they have to roll opposing strength checks to see if we go in circles? <laughs> <laughs> I think that I am actually as strong as Rogar. Really? Really? Well, maybe Rogar not. Rogar is awfully strong. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought maybe you had more wisdom than strength. Rogar is cleric. awfully oh. strong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, not. Rogar has quite a bit more strength than wisdom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, I do have a 14 strength. I'm probably in the... Yeah, anyway. Okay. 
I, I, I will assist you. Harbeck starts Pretty doing so his best correct. Brieg impression. Maybe I should row. <laughs> they don't mean well, to get it on like you. I just that, the, that athletics check. They're not <laughs> splashing yeah. you on purpose. They're not <laughs> splashing you on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Rogue guy just grabs both oars and starts motoring the boat towards <laughs> Din. Um, Din, is, is there supposed to be water in the boat? There's water in the boat. Is there supposed okay. to be water in- There's water in the boat! I'm gonna slap them. I'm just slapping. <laughs> Get a hold of yourself, man! <laughs> no, 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 not like that. <laughs> I'm holding myself as tight as I can. Um, okay. So, Rogar so, is, is rowing so fast, there's actually a wake. Uh, he could probably <laughs> water ski behind our little dinghy. <laughs> Why would you get out there on even smaller boats on each foot? That's that's insane. <laughs> Sorry, I okay. don't mean to use the word so lightly. <laughs> <That dork debris. laughs> right, so you you manage to row yourself towards a ship in the distance. It's a, still a fair way off, but row guy is getting you there quite rapidly, um, and seems to be holding up under the workload quite well. Uh, the as you approach, you realize that the island is really just a rock. It's just like a rock with a little bit of sand. It's, it's not what you would call a typical island. Um, and is obviously not on a map because it would be a pinprick of land. But the Mary Eileen, um, and you can tell it's the Mary Eileen because it says Mary Eileen on the side of the ship. Uh, is there and seems to be in rather good shape for a ship that was sunk in an excessively violent storm. Um, in fact, you can't see any hull damage at all from the direction you're approaching, which is sort of behind and left of the ship. Um, I, did, I didn't realize that our ship had already gathered such a reputation. The captain was terrified. That man's things he chooses to be terrified about are all completely wrong. Spends his entire life out here doing this and he's afraid of another boat? Like, what? I don't understand. Just get to the rock. Get to the rock. <laughs> there really isn't even enough room for the entire party to stand on the rock. It's, it's not big. It, it, like, Harbick would probably feel uncomfortable standing on the rock. That's how close he would be to the water on all sides. Uh, however, the rear of the ship, the stern of the ship, hey, some nautical knowledge, getting <laughs> um, is low enough to the to, to sort of the water level that, with the assistance of maybe a rogar boost, everybody could climb from the dinghy up onto the the stern onto of the, the ship, ship itself. Um, so, do you want to board the ship? Yes. yes. It looks to be rocking a bit less than this one. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it seems to be sort of stable wherever it is. Okay, uh, let's move you over to a new map then, shall we? It's a boat. It's a boat. It's a boat. I'm on a boat. I, I assume that this uh, ship is somewhat larger than the one that brought us out here? Ah, uh, yes. Much, much larger. This is a cargo vessel. Um, you know, multi-decked. Uh, designed for hauling large amounts of freight. Uh, the other one was quite a small sort of fast vessel designed for okay. traveling distances and carrying messages and small groups of people and things like that. This is a much, much bigger boat. As we get our feet slightly more stable, Harbeck remembers. Oh, that I'm, I've got an alternate reason to be here. I told you I was doing a favor. There is a shipment of some yellow crystals. I was reminded quite a few times not to touch them with my skin. So if you see yellow crystals, be very careful around them. I don't know at all what they are, but I wouldn't Can touch, we touch them. them with my skin. Nay, last uh, gloves yes. might be ideal. Perhaps tongs. If you're if feeling extra careful. If we find them, I think I've got a magic bag that goes with the magic rope. Perfect. That sounds great. A magic bag. Hey, you know, I've got a magic everything. I have mage hand. You do. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, for the viewers as well, just a quick note. We will be testing 
uh, today, the dynamic lighting function um, that paid Roll20 users have access to. I was a backer, an original backer. So uh, you'll see the lighting dynamically changing. I'd like your feedback on whether you think it's cool or not, and whether or not you would like to see it in future maps as well. Um, it does take a little bit of extra preparation time, but I think it's really cool, and I wanted to show it off. So it's been a little bit rough this week because I've been unwell and I haven't had a chance to do as much as I would have liked, but the uh, it's here. So let us know what you think at the end of the, the video uh, or the episode or the comment on YouTube or whatever you decide to do wherever you're watching this. Uh, at any rate, so you are on the ship. You are on the upper deck of the ship. Uh, what would you like to do? No, we're just uh, here looking for clues, right? Like, we don't have any... Besides my yellow crystals, we don't have a specific anything. Just a search. Where well, did the innkeeper lady send us out here for? She sent us here. Was there a specific... Nobody remembers? I have, I have an impression that may be completely wrong. But this is, this is what Harbeck remembers after all of the chaos of the past few days. The, the innkeeper translated a note. And the note indicated that this ship was, like, absconded with using the cover of the storm because the bad Serath people wanted something that's on it. But I don't remember any more detail than that. I uh, took off my headphones during much of that conversation, I think, because she was talking about me in the heads of the other characters. So I'm not sure that I heard it. You've pretty much nailed what the the sort of general gist. Okay. So we're just said, here trying to figure out what they might be looking for without much more direction than something Serath people want. Yes. Were they after yellow crystals? Maybe we get two birds with one stone, but we should look through everything. Okay. All right. I'm going to start with this thing in front of us. I really hope that, that something, that we find something on the ship that goes... <laughs> I hope we don't find that. That's <laughs> I hope we don't find that <laughs> or anything dead. That was uh. clearly out of character. Clearly, clearly a mill. <laughs> um, right, so the thing directly in front of you is just a, a, like a storage chest for ropes and things like that. Nope. Um, Are any of them magic? I pick one up with a mage hand. <gasps> Brig! <gasps> Keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we've made Brig give up. <laughs> I am glad that you have given up. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided to just embrace the madness. Share the madness, you know? Okay. So, how are going to work his way down the stairs and start opening containers, the rest of the containers on the deck here? Oh. Look at this one. Okay, uh, more storage of, of ropes and iron hooks and things like that used for rigging and sails. Yeah, I figure we'll want to be in the cargo hold before we find anything, but we might as well be thorough, because it was hard to get here, and oh, I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so... Both of these things marked three, I assume, are, like, we can look down on the hold. Maybe they open down to the hold? Or? Uh, they're both cargo hatches designed for dropping cargo uh, into for... the cargo hold. Okay, but if we wanted to walk down there, we probably would want to go down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're basically just holes with grates covering them. Um, you enough. can look down, but the sunlight, because of the nature of the, the holes, and, and, and they're quite small, you know, you only get sort of a very dappled light onto the deck below. Um, and you can't actually see much down there. All right. So um, at all. main deck seems pretty clear. Are there, There's nowhere else that would warrant, like, looking for a secret hatch or something. It's just a cargo ship. Uh, as far as you can tell. Is, is okay. there, like, a... Harbeck is very invested in never coming back, so he's going to do, like, a thorough search of the top deck with an investigation check because okay, he's not that. coming back ever. Is there, like, the captain's cabin back here in the stern under the raised part? Uh, no. No, there's okay. no sort of captain's cabin there. Not that you can see, anyway. Okay. It might be accessed from a lower deck. I mean, you, you know a little bit about the ship. 
and about the layout of the ship from your time on it. Um, yeah, I know. I was. Yeah, you spent a few days aboard. I feel like that's a relatively common place for it. To thing. have the captain's cabin in the aft castle. Yeah, castle. That's a thing. Yep. But yeah, I don't know how they say aft castle. I know they say forecastle, foxel. Like they mush mm. it all together. I don't know how you say aftcastle. Like that doesn't. <laughs> I, there's too many consonants for me. <laughs> you have to, uh, no, I, I just decided that that joke might be racist, so then I stopped saying it. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's limit that. All right. So, are we all heading down the stairs? Then you don't find anything of note Great. on uh, the upper deck there. Down the stairs it is. Okay. So and there is nothing in the foxhole. There's nothing in the foxhole. Uh, I do need to ask, as you start to look down the stairs and head down the stairs, those who have no dark vision... Light uh, eight torch. So yeah, we've got Din, Tavern, and Rogar. I have dark vision, a but torch. I just like the dark. So I will cast light on something. How mundane. Let's use, let's use Briggs Magic Rock. Uh, <laughs> um, cast light on... I have a torch. A dagger of mine. So, okay, uh, so Din has a torch. If we really want to scout out down there, we could take one of the ropes, cast light on it, and lower it down through a hole. Ooh. Just saying. Because we could get down there and there's just a bunch of zombies. Or something. Then we Why should kill them. concept. Or lizards that we then alert to our presence. But hey, we're upstairs. Just throwing um, that out there. I don't know if you guys want to try that. But. I like that plan. Couldn't I just drop the torch down? Sure. Well, the thing's made okay. of wood. That's on fire. Oh, we the, don't want to... The, oh. the only thing separating me from miles and miles of watery, salty death is a bit of wood. I'd like it to remain not on fire. I don't think this okay, bay fine. is really miles and miles deep. Probably more like a few hundred feet at most. And we have a magic rope. You'll be fine. Brig, effectively, the difference <laughs> between hundreds of feet and miles in this instance, I don't think is... Well, you know, in a couple hundred feet you may drown, but you won't be crushed terribly. Okay, okay, Would you okay, not, we'll the Brig, come <laughs> on! You know what it's like to be terrified! <laughs> uh, I will uh, mage hand a, a coin or, you know, like a copper piece or a small pebble or something that I can find with light down the uh, loading grate and see how much I can see down there. You know, kind of float my little light around with a mage hand and scout it out from above. Okay. That's something I wasn't prepared for. Haha! <laughs> Dynamic light this! <laughs> <laughs> you give me like like five seconds and I will. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, I just need a rock. Can I have a rock? There we go. That's a rock. Good. Um. Uh, what's the light radius on? Twenty. You want me to know things? Is it twenty twenty on? Twenty twenty. Twenty bright, twenty dim. Twenty bright and twenty dim. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, how small are the openings? Are we, like, a couple inches or, like, a half an inch, the openings on these grates? Uh, um, I'm just curious if I'm, like, laying down with my eye pressed to it, or if I can just kind of, like... You can it. sort of just look around. Okay. I thought they um, might be... Well, I don't know. Sorry, I shouldn't venture. I assumed that they were rather large and you could, like, I don't know, maybe fit a gnome in them, but not a Harbeck or a <laughs> Rogar. You could fit an arm through the, the hole. Okay. Um, but you might not get it back. Ooh. <laughs> as long as we're trying to scare people with the crushing. <laughs> Seriously. I apologize. You're, I, I should be more sensitive to people's phobias, frankly. All right, so you you sort of move the light around inside. You should be able to see it moving if you look across on your map. Uh, across. Zoom out and figure out where you are. To the right. 
I don't see a light. Don't see it. Don't see it. Uh, um, oh, I know what I can do to make you be able to see it. Because everybody, everybody's looking, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I would like to keep an eye out, just like on the stairs and stuff, since we're obviously making noise above deck. Oh, hey, there on deck. Ooh. By the way, I just figured out like last time that I used this. If you shift and then click and hold, it will refocus everyone's attention to where you are pinging. It really? like drags everybody's vision to there. Yeah. Oh. Ah, so I can do that. Fantastic. Hey, that's great. All right, so yeah, floating that's rock so cool. of light, dynamic light. Way uh, cool. So those are ore stations, rowers benches. Yes. Yep. So we need to go Rowers one more benches. down from there to get to. Yeah. Well, to we probably cargo. can't really angle it well enough to get through you that next set of crates and see anything. <laughs> Yeah, so you could you could send the rock down there, but you wouldn't be able to actually see yeah, anything. All that's gonna do is alert anything that might be down there and not show us anything. So we can try this again from down one deck, I guess. Yeah. I'll I'll head down the stairs. Now that we've scouted as much as we can scout. Can I hold okay. the rock? <laughs> sure. I'm going to move the rock upstairs for now and just make it disappear so I don't have to recreate it. Right. Uh, but but Tabarin will have a light spell basically. Yes centered on him. I've, I've already put that on him. Okay, so, uh, Harbick is leading the way. Mm-hmm. Bam! Yay, dark vision. Whoa. Okay. Hey, hey, dark vision. That's really um, awesome. Everybody should have their own light sources attached to them now if they said that they were having a light source, they've got a light source. Yeah, so <laughs> unless you get far away from Harbeck, we won't see it on the stream, because I have dark vision that extends pretty far. Yeah, exactly right. You got sixty feet of dark vision on uh, on Harvick, so he can see out to like the second row of benches, I believe. Um, yeah, once I get down past that doorway. So do you you, you like draw the lines to tell it where the walls are, so that it yes, knows, yeah. it's so cool. Yep, oh, it's, it's cool it's, how it moves. Yeah, it's really really cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, would this be a good spot to break for YouTube, or should we explore this deck and go down one more before we? I mean, maybe that's spoilers, and we shouldn't answer that. <laughs> um, no, now's that's now's a perfect time because now's you know we've it's a new deck. Yeah. Okay. It's a new, new deck. Day. It's a new day. New day. <laughs> that's what I was going for. Damn it. <laughs> Bye, Babs. You can always Ruin. count on Babs to sing whatever song you were thinking of when you said a thing. I have, on more than one occasion, heard her start singing a song and then turn on the radio to find that song playing. She has like weird radio reception in her uh, fillings. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have any fillings. That's what you think. Have you been awake every moment of your life? (laughs) Have I been alone with your mouth? That is not a question. I should. We're gonna be back.